We're pleased to present the fourth edition of the Art and Architecture series dedicated to the young cooperative Norwegian studio Tin Tegnes II. Tin is a studio that was founded in 2008 by Jascher Hanstad and Andreas Gertsen. They started um, in 2008 doing projects in Thailand and in a period of three years they have completed several projects in Thailand, Uganda, Sumatra and many people consider their architecture as humanitarian architecture but they prefer to use the term architecture of necessity. I guess we're a different studio than most uh, usual architect offices. We started our studio in, um, in our studies in our third year in architect school. Um, and we started by building stuff. That was the first thing we sort of got hooked on. We won a competition for a small uh, student house, uh, like a community center. And then we started building this as we were designing. And we, and we sort of got hooked on the idea of building what we were designing. Um, but after a while we started getting too used to the Norwegian comfort, like, like you always, uh, in Norway everything is quite comfortable. And we wanted to sort of get rid of that kind of safety and, and be a bit more uh, outside of our comfort zone. So we moved to Thailand and lived there for a year and uh, built four projects there uh, during the whole, uh, as part of our studies basically. Um, and there we built uh, some orphanages for uh, refugees in Thailand and of course this, the, the meeting with real people in the architecture changed the way we saw architecture also coming back to Norway. So in a way you could say that we did sort of a, a, a trip that was the, a maturing of ideas about what architecture should be and can be. And the biggest, the most profound change, I would say, is that we, we realized how much the human aspect affects architecture and should affect architecture. So basically, we started working with people as a resource like wood or like money or like time. Uh, it's basically so much energy and um, resource in the people you work with. Coming from a hands-on uh, way of working with architecture, we've been interested in materials and constructions and structure uh, as long as we've been working with architecture. So for us, it's a natural way to show our work. It's not so much about the built project itself, but how we deal with materials, how the materials affect what we build and how we build it. Uh, so that's also why we've tried to in install so many real materials and not only pictures of materials in the exhibition. Uh, a lot of these materials, they can't only be viewed as visual, uh, visual stimuli for the body, but the whole system uh, receives different kinds of information from the materials. For instance, the cinnamon we use in the Cassia Coop training center, uh, it, it not only has a texture and it looks rust brown, but it also smells of cinnamon. Um, it it gives, gives a different sound because it has a different structure uh, compared to, let's say, brick, which, which is um, smells differently. It can also almost you can almost taste it in a way. So. We're interested in materials that affect the whole body in a way, in a sensory way. So for us, that's, that's architecture in many ways. And as I said, the human aspect has always been intriguing for us because we had to work closely with 
the people involved in the projects because normally in in, in um, projects in Norway you you can you you have a, a system that that you follow in when you make a project but in Thailand for instance there are so many informal social networks that you can't tap into them without getting involved as a human being and you have to understand that the people on the other side might have a, a resource that can affect the project in a positive way and without being uh, aware of these things it's really hard to to make projects in these locations and of course structure i think structure is something that interests us both because both me and Nersha we're builders we like to do stuff and understand how things work we we like to understand how architecture is put together uh, but at the same time we also come from a university uh, NTNU in Trondheim and it's uh, it has a long tradition of engineering based architecture so uh, there are a lot of our teachers that have very practical approaches to architecture and of course based on a lot of this do-it-yourself attitude that you find in, in at least in Norway people building their own houses uh, all our grandfathers have have built their own house in a way so that's that's kind of part of the culture we, we, we grew up with and that that affects the way we look at architecture For the exhibition, we brought the Tin Toolbox, which was a project that they made for the Biennale of Architecture in Venice in 2012, where they were invited to show their tools of work. And instead of showing their actual tools, what they did was a box which shows advice that they learned all throughout their experience in, in Thailand and in Southeast Asia. The Art and Architecture series of Mossack uh, is uh, a series of exhibitions and publications dedicated to artists or architects whose work encompasses the two fields and leads it to a social context. This is the fourth edition, which started in 2010 with Alexander Apostol, Jona Friedman, Apollonia Sustersik, and then the publication by TIN. And in this publication, we invited several professionals of art and architecture to write about the four core values of their practice, which is material, structure, detail, and the human factor. Well, when we first uh, got um, the task of sort of building the book or, or trying to make a catalog for the exhibition, we thought it could be a good opportunity to do something else than just showing pictures of what we have done and, and explaining like descriptive texts. We wanted to use the opportunity to convey a different story. Uh, we already have um, published a book about sort of the history of, of tea in Tegmestu, so that wasn't that interesting. So we wanted to let someone else look into what we've done and sort of reflect on how can this be rele relevant for a bigger part of the community of professionals or even outside of the professional community. So basically we, we got uh, four professionals to comment on these topics, uh, details, materials, construction, sorry, structure and uh, human the human factor and by challenging other professionals to look at our work we see that they find um, values and, and things in our work that we have never thought of and in a, again this proves how important the human factor is in the project it depends on the person that reacts to it basically so it's the first time we've seen uh, that thorough comments on the work in not in just saying it's good or bad but trying to put it into a, a bigger context.